Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a CRUD application with React and a Node backend. So basically for those who don't know, CRUD basically means create, read, update and delete. It's an application that is going to be communicating with a backend and it's going to have a, a database, which in our case we're going to be using MySQL and you're going to be able to read data from that database, update it, create it and delete it. So in our case, we're going to be using React for the front end and a node for the back end. It might seem overkill since it's a very simple application, but I just want to teach you guys how to kind of communicate between a front end and a back end using React and a back end using node. So in our case, we created a folder called CRUD application and we're going to create two files, two folders inside of our, our, our project, right? So we're going to create one called client and I'm going to explain why we're creating two folders and another one called uh, server. Basically, when you're trying to communicate and have two, uh, pro two sides of the project, so working in the front end and working in the back end, you will need to have two parts of the project. So one, it's going to be the server, which is going to contain the back end and the client is going to contain the React application. So we're going to first start with the React part. So I'm going to go to my folder by doing cd client and as you can see now i'm in my my client folder and i'm gonna use the create react app boilerplate so npx create react app and i'm gonna put a dot which basically means that i want to create the application on this folder so press enter and it's gonna take a while to install react so i'm gonna cut right to when it finished installing Okay, so as you can see, everything installed. We have our React application over here. And for now, we're only, only going to work on our React. It's going to be really fast. It's really simple. So we're already in the client. I wanna npm start. So we start our application and it's gonna ro run over here. So let's see. And while it's doing that, you can see that it's the simple, like the the beginning of a React application, this is what it looks like every time. So we're gonna erase most of this. We're gonna erase the app.test.js, the index.css, the logo, the service worker, the setup tests, but erase everything. The only thing we need are the app.js and the index.js and the app.css. Let me now remove all the imports. Let me remove this trick mode and add a comma right here. Then remove remove this and save it. And then you can to come to app.js and remove the logo. And uh, finally, erase everything. And right here, hello. Okay, you can see that now we have a, an empty application with uh, a tag saying hello. And that's fine for now. So what we're gonna do is almost everything in our application are going to is going to be made through the app.js. We're going to be writing a title first, so h1 um, crud application. And in our case, we want to, let's let's put a use case to this. Basically, let's think of, um, try to make an application where you can add and delete um, movie reviews. So like, just, just a review, right? So we're gonna store the movie name and our review. So let's add some inputs, input and of type text, text. And this is going to be the um, movie name, right? So basically we have an input where we're gonna write the movie name and we're gonna have another one where we're gonna write the, the review. And in our application, we're going to be able to just create a, a, a movie review, read a movie review, which basically, basically means that we can select, see all the movie reviews, and we're going to be able to update it and delete it. So in our case, we already have this. We're also going to, let me come here and create a div around this, just so, so it doesn't look like horrible. Let me see div, and let me give this a class name of um, form, whatever. And I'm going to come to the app.css and let me raise everything because this was the initial CSS and right here form and give it a display flex 
and a flex direction of column so so that they are stacked on top of each other column okay okay what happened we also want to get the input so form a form input and let's make the width equal to like 300 pixels the height equal to like uh, I don't know 60 pixels and let's put a margin so margin like 10 pixels okay it doesn't look perfect but that's okay I also want to align I align items Cent center and justify justify content center this will basically put everything in the middle so as you can see we have our application over here we write the movie names and uh, over here we, ha we write the review and for that we're also going to add a label label um, over here movie name and let's copy this and write um, review okay review it looks fine let me just increase the font size because it's giving me it's irritating me a bit so 25 pixels maybe um, okay yeah it looks good and finally we need to add a button right here so that we can submit our information so button and the button is going to be um, submit and it's okay over here we're gonna write the movie name, the review, we click submit, it's going to be sending the information to the database and it's all fine, right? So now I'm thinking we should transition to the backend and the reason why is I need to create the database, I need to create the Node.js and Express server and there's not much we can do right now without having the backend done. So to create the backend, I'm gonna close everything from the front end and I'm going to like not look at the folder I'm going to open the, the server folder. In our case, you can see that we are in the client folder right here. So I'm going to get out of the client server by writing CD two dots. Now we are in the major directory. So we are in the CRUD application directory and we're going to CD into the server. So change directory into the server. And how do we create a, a Node.js application? Basically, we need to write npm init and it's going to create a, a JSON file. Just click enter to all these questions that are going to appear here. It doesn't matter. Click yes. And you can see that now a package.json was created. Inside of here, it declares that the main file is index.js. I usually call it app.js. It doesn't matter. In our case, just to not make it complicated, I'm going to call it index.js. So go to your server and create a file called index.js. This is going to be the file where our server is going to be running through. So we need to install some dependencies first. We're going to be using uh, an express server and I'm going to increase the size in this so you guys can see it. We're going to be using a, an express server. So npm install express. We're also going to be using another dependency called buddy parser. So let's install this and I'm going to explain what each one of this means. And for now, I think that's it. Also, also we need to install MySQL, right? So MySQL is the database we're going to be using. So I need to install that. These are the three things we want, so let's press enter and it's going to be installing. And while it's installing, let's create the Express server. So to create an Express server, and you can see that everything was installed and on the package.json, the three things appear right here. Oh, I forgot something. We need to install another dependency called Nodemon. Nodemon. And what's the good thing about Nodemon is that we can run our, our server without having to rerun it every time we make some changes. So npm install uh, node mod. And uh, for now, let's just let it install. You can see that all the dependencies appear right here and that's good. So let's go to the index.js and create our express server. To create an express server, you need to uh, const express, we're creating a variable called express and we're going to require the express middleware, which basically means like the express a dependency. And then we want to create an app through that express variable. So const app equals express. And we want to listen to it. So in our case, we're going to write app.listen. We, we got to pass a port 
Since our local host for the React application is running on 3000, let's run our server on 3001. And let's pass a function. So we're going to pass an arrow function in our case. So just this. And inside of here, let's write a like a simple console log, just making sure that we're actually running the server. So running on port 301. It should be good. And let's run the server for now. Since I, I haven't uh, configured node one, I'm just going to run it through node index.js and that's going to run. You can see that it says running on port 3001. And if we go here and write localhost 3001, you can see that it says cannot get slash. This basically means that it's working. We're just not doing anything to our server. Uh, we can do something with our server. For example, if we want to uh, access the the route, which it's basically the initial route, we can write app dot use no app dot get and call the initial route. So the slash, and we pass here a function with a rack and a res. And I'm gonna explain what what each one one of them means. You can send a res dot send a text. So we're gonna send hello world, right? And if we see here and update this, oh, I forgot, we need to run it again. So um, let's run it again. Node index.js, you can see that now it, has, it says hello world. And basically what this means is in Express, you have the app variable, right? And you want to detect whenever you're reaching certain routes in your browser. If I was trying to reach the slash, I don't know, login, it, it'll say cannot get login. Why? Because we have, we're not saying what we need to, what we want to do if someone tries to reach the slash login in our case we're saying we want to do something we want to send a message called hello world whenever someone tried to reach the slash like the empty slash which basically means it's the it's just the url so that's why when we go to the empty slash it says hello world and ba ba when you say app.get you pass the the route then you pass the parameters of a function these parameters are all, almost always the same. Rec means required and res means response. So when we say when we say res, it's it's like a response we're sending to the front end. We're basically wanting to send this information to so that the user can see it in your front end. And rec will be used when we're not, when we're trying to get information from the front end. So this is basically like the simplest information, the simplest description of what this means. But for now, it's cool that. Uh, it's a bit uh, complicated to understand at first. So what we need to do now is configure Nodemon. And this is really simple. We just need to go to our package.json and you'll see that on the scripts, there is just a test over here, which basically means that whenever we run the test command, we, we want to test our application. However, we will also want to add a way so that Nodemon knows that we're trying to run our application and it will continuously Re refreshing our server so that we see the changes. So let's first add a, a start command. Whenever we want to start our application, we want to run node index.js. This is simple. This basically means that whenever we write the command node index.js, we want to start our application. But we also want to uh, uh, we also want to communicate that we want to run um, a development environment. So we want to run an, a server that's only in case of development, so that it knows that it's going to continuously refresh. So the, how we do this is by basically running the command dev start and writing the, the following command, nodemon and the name of our file, so index.js. Basically, it just says that whenever we run this command, we want to run the, the server through nodemon. And in order to run this, we write npm run dev start. And as you can see, it says that it's running everything on port 3001. And you can see that this will change over here. Every time we, we refresh our page, it will run the server again automatically. So if we change here to my name, hello, Pedro, and we refresh this, it will automatically refresh here. You can see this, right? So this is a very easy way of working through your Node.js application. It's what most people do because no one has the time of, to like, keep rerunning the command to refresh your server. So yeah, that's basically it. So I just realized that this video is actually gonna be a lot longer than I expected. 
In our case, we're like 50 minutes in, 15 minutes in. So I'm probably going to make this into two videos. So yeah, this is for this video. Please stick around to see the next video of my series. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Please comment down below whatever video you guys want me to do. Because I'll definitely go around and do this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.